Welcome back to the channel. My name is Crawford. This is Virginia's for Lowriders. Today we're getting back on the Mazda. Last week we did a lot of randomness. Last two weeks we did a lot of randomness. I did a lot of ADD searching and just let it run wild. Today, actually today in the next four days hopefully. Today I'm not going to actually be like welding that's for the next three days but all in the same video but last week we went through and we made gussets for the rear all over this thing we made gussets for the bag mount so we added that bar in there to where shocks will be laddered in there later did some dimple dyeing did a little bit of everything and bounced around and last week or uh, two weeks ago we really really bounced around but today we're gonna try our best to stay on track i'm not sure if it's gonna work by the end of the three or four days i'm gonna try to have the exhaust finished up everything except for where the exhaust comes out from the bed because the truck's gonna eventually get body dropped and I don't know where the tailpipe's gonna lay. So we're gonna bring the exhaust over the rear and it's probably just gonna terminate somewhere around that frame rail. So that's the goal. In this video, we need to have start to finish 95% of the exhaust. In the last few days, I've been getting parts finally. I would really have liked to start to, started this on Monday I probably could have and then just went back and welded this in but this little flex pipe bellow finally showed up today it's actually a nice piece it's all 304 stainless steel just like the rest of this tubing and the muffler and the header that i made from scratch in another video if you haven't checked that out you can watch me uh trying to figure out how to work with stainless steel for the first time I would say, well, we'll let's just say the fourth time, the first three times were practice. That's the first actual thing that I have fabricated out of stainless steel. So what better way to continue learning how to do that than jumping right into a full exhaust system to go along with the header. Like I said, we got this bellow. I got these guys all the way from Australia. These are tech clamps i will be showing how these are used even though i never used them before last week we did make a couple of i think we made four so far stainless steel tabs that will be welded onto the exhaust like this i was able to find the high temperature silicone bushings that go inside of these so we're going to be learning how to use those guys as exhaust mounts. And if I have more free time, we're just going to let the ADD do its thing. The only thing that I haven't gotten yet is I ordered some 3 8 pretty sure it's 3 8 3 8 stainless steel rod. Just in case in the front I wanted to do like a traditional style exhaust mount with the actual rubber hanger. Still kind of undecided on that because of room restriction into the cab and it's going to be body dropped and all that other stuff but if you're new here please subscribe if you have been here for a while you'll understand the add and rambling and jumping around and all of that stuff that i normally do in all of these videos and uh again y'all are it's awesome where we are over a thousand now and steadily growing so if you're new here hopefully you stick around go check out all the old videos because there's I think we're up to like 15 parts of this truck in particular. There are many more cars to come and trucks and everything else. So thank y'all and uh, let's get into it. Before I continue rambling, I did this in the last video. I didn't mean to do this again. I just, I record stuff and then I find things and I have to like clarify, but whatever. I was gonna say three days ago and I did say that I went through my container and found a tank of argon and 
me and the, the flashlight at 10 o'clock at night, I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's Argon. And then I carried it in here and I didn't look at it. And I went to hook it up Friday, which was yesterday. I didn't get anything done yesterday because I messed with that and realized I can't read. And that's a mixed tank. And then I messed with trying to make a inline deal for purging. I ordered the actual purging valve. I was trying not to. I really don't want to buy an expensive one, so I'm going to attempt, which always ends up biting me in the butt. I'm going to attempt buying the Amazon version. It should hopefully be here today. That guy should hopefully get me by if I actually get anything more than tack welded before the other part shows up. But the tank thing didn't work out. That tank is almost empty. My other two Argon tanks are empty. And I was holding out until this morning, which turned into me driving around a bunch to tractor supply and attempting to go to other places and finding out that all of the welding shops now around here are closed on Saturdays. I used to be down to one, and it's like my, my go-to place because it's a mom and pop shop, and they're no longer open on Saturdays. So I wasted the whole morning. It's like 2.30, and I'm just now getting started, and I haven't started cutting a single thing, and I tried to start this video four days ago, so let's get to work and stop talking about it. And I'll show you real quick something I actually recorded last week, or three days ago, the purge setup that I came up with. Yeah, let's get to work. I've been slowly purchasing high temp silicone plugs off of Amazon to make the other side myself. So they sell these kits online, which I'll try to find a picture of it and link it in the video. I think it's four pieces for like $300 or something crazy. I, it just doesn't make sense for me to do that because, I, again, I don't do this all the time. This is new. You can get like two of these off Amazon for like $12. So I bought a whole bunch of different sizes. Some of them come in larger quantities for whatever reason. And I just drilled a hole in them bought a little kit with some air slowdowns and some small barbed fittings and made my own exact same thing. They just don't have the little pull tab on them. So they're high temp. They should be able to handle up to 600 degrees. So as long as they're not laying on the weld, they'll never get that hot. So, uh, Hopefully I can piece all this together for no money. Well, besides the money that I've already blown like years ago because I buy things. Somebody really needs to take my Amazon account away from me. I just buy stuff that I think I'm gonna use and then it sits in my garage and then I ramble about it and then I just get to work instead of talking and rambling. So I need to find a hose that fits both of these and some Teflon for this weird two-piece barb fitting and see if we can successfully make this work. I think it's a good goal for tonight because if you haven't noticed, it is dark. It's like 8.30 or something. So, like I said, not, no actual welding tonight. That's tomorrow. We're going we're gonna to bust our ass tomorrow and knock out as much as we can. Again, rambling. I know, I know. These are new, just so I put that out there, because it's kind of weird, but I get a lot of junk vehicles from people, and, well, that sounds kind of weird. For whatever reason, people see me as a guy that they're willing to give a vehicle that's just in their backyard for the last 30 years or whatever. I don't know what about my white trashiness screams that guy needs a junk vehicle but it happens it's really weird it happens but i found in one of the junk vehicles like a like 10 of these they're like the oxygen breathing thing again this has never been used but oddly enough it has a 
large end and if you snip off the nose portion it has a small end and both of those fit both of these so i just drilled this out and drilled this out so you just kind of mash that guy in there and then the same for the opposite these guys here are slow downs so they can be adjusted to what if you want them to leak out or not leak out and this is ready to purge but i think i'm gonna pick this back up when i get off work tomorrow so see y'all then so one thing that i do need to do is do the rest of the welding around this guy and here and the header will be finished up but before i forget to say it i wanted to say thanks to a subscriber that i've been talking back and forth with he's actually a really cool guy all these lights being out makes this kind of a pain in the butt he sent me his name's sean he sent me a super fresh filler neck and the hoses to go along with it because you can see mine is a rusty broken mess so thanks again sean this is awesome and uh it will definitely get used and thanks to my buddy james I actually had a tank of argon which technically thanks to his dad because yeah whatever it they know what i mean thanks guys everybody it's awesome so now need to get header the rest of the way welded up set on the truck and start cutting stuff I'm not sure where we're going with this i've made a lot of exhaust over the years but with normal regular steel exhaust if you've ever messed with either one of these things you'll understand what i'm talking about Regular exhaust doesn't really care. You can hit it with a MIG welder. It could be a little baby gap in there and it's all right. Stainless steel, it's gotta be tight. So there's a little bit more sort of precision that has to be done in order for this to not look like complete crap. So again, we, we keep getting doing this. We keep doing this. We're, we're just getting straight away. I need to well. I keep pacing back and forth and I just got to stop it. All right. There is one tiny spot on the header that I can't get to. And I need to find my micro torch stuff to hook that up to my welder because my TIG torch is too big. So we're going to throw it on there and it shouldn't be a big deal right now. I'm not going to drive it like that. I just need this purely for mock-up and was trying to get as far along on finishing that up as possible. So we're gonna throw the header on with the old gasket for now, since it's going to come back off. I get that bolted down and we'll get under there and see what kind of room we got to work with. Well, it showed up before I even had a chance to use my ghetto put together homemade stuff. Hopefully this thing doesn't leak because I don't have enough gas for this project to leak at all. I'm hoping that the one that I'm borrowing, which I'll have to refill when I get done with it, I'm hoping that has gas in it still. I know that the welder that it came off hasn't been used in years and I don't know. I'll have to hook the gauge up to it in a few minutes and see if there's anything actually inside of it. But at least this Amazon one has the $40 worth of brass on it that I paid for the entire gauge or 35 or whatever it was. I don't do this very often. Like I keep saying, like, if it ends up me not doing this a whole lot, it would suck to spend hundreds of dollars on a gauge and then just randomly be like, nah, I don't want to do that no more. And I'm just throwing money away and rambling. 
All right, this hooked up. It is working. Hopefully, I can get somewhere with that little bit of gas. Fingers crossed. I got the header bolted in place. Plenty of room on my triangulated bar. It looks like it's actually touching the bell housing just a little bit, so I'll have to massage that one tube in a little. I got my little bellow flex pipe deal here. The thing with the bellow and the V-band is the exhaust fits inside of here and it fits inside of here to be welded. So I'm going to have to come up with a short piece of pipe to connect the V-band to this. I can't just weld these together. All, and I think that would be kind of weird because the clamp is kind of bulky. So I'm going to cut a short section of tubing to fit here. It's going to have to come back and have a gradual drop to it. So I got to come up with whatever bend that is. But I think I'll be good on room because it'll be in line with this curve here. So I'm going to cut this, fit this, get all of this bolted together, and then just start building all the way back. So I cut two different lengths not positive kind of thinking the longer one that way it gives you a little more room for the v-band yeah i think that'll work if you ever buy one of these bellows make sure you put it on correctly there is a forward and reverse you see that lip you wouldn't want the exhaust blowing into that lip. It needs to go the other way. So I'm gonna weld these three together and see if my Amazon put together, I don't know what you would call this, homemade back purge kit works and hopefully doesn't melt. Let's see. All right, I set these just random straight edges in here to get an idea of the height that I can work with here. And clearly this needs to be dropped down a little bit, which I knew before this. So I need to come up with something maybe out of this 45 to bring this down just a little bit to clear here and clear this guy. And then it has to come back up because by the time it gets to the back, it is too low. And checking with my little muffler here, there's plenty of room in there. So hopefully I can do this without wasting a bunch of these 45s that I bought. And I really hope that dropping this down, I can use the other half to bring it back up once I get to here. But who knows, I'll probably waste another 50 bucks from how this is going so far. Got a bunch of these 45s and I needed to make that little jog out of the 45. So I cut, it took two 45s to get to this, but I just cut them at whatever degree I guessed. And I need to tack weld these two together and that'll give me my roughly half an inch a drop or so to clear that cross member. And then I'll have to go in and trim here and this side will probably leave at length, but trim this side at least. I'm gonna get these welded together and go from there. But one thing I definitely need to do is work on consistency and counting my dimes or counting my pat per, I don't know, counting, counting each time I dip. Because 
consistency is so far what I'm lacking. But, you see, a little jog. So I need to trim it probably about here and see how it fits. And there, we got plenty of clearance, top and bottom. It's not hanging below the frame rail. It looks good going into the bellow. So I need to pull it out and weld it together. All right, we are making something that looks like exhaust now. Got that guy set in there. Took one of my uh, four foot pieces, cut it down to 16 or so inches. So this will get welded on here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again and sacrifice 245s to make this same bend, but the opposite. We wanna go up so where we can cross through my cross member thing that I made. So I'm gonna weld this guy on here and then hopefully not ruin 245s. We are finally able to use the tools from Australia. I don't know why that part's so fascinating to me, but it's cool. So it's very simple. Wrap it around the exhaust. Just a normal pair of vice grips. Get everything lined up to where you want it. Probably should have adjusted this before I turned the camera on. And it clamps it in place with slots to where you can get tack welds all the way around the exhaust pipe. Which is good, because I suck at stainless steel, if you haven't noticed yet. But we're learning. It's the whole point of this. We're learning. I'm a fan. I'm sold. Even though I already bought them. I'm sold on it. That's awesome. Because, as you can see, I don't have any clamps or anything specialized to do stainless steel just yet. Or, I haven't had time to make any jigs to hold everything in place while I'm doing this. So, I'm not that good at tack welding stuff together as far as stainless steel goes. Especially this thin stuff because this is off Amazon. It's not the thickest thing you can buy or the best quality, but it is perfect for this truck. So I don't want to burn up. My garage is a mess. I don't want to burn up all of my 45s because I'm, I know that I'm going to need them. So I made this guy out of 290s. So this is going to go immediately after the pipe that we just welded up that we used the clamp on to get up to that cross member and go th pass through that cross member potentially. So now I need to lay under there and mark all that out. Man, am I slacking. I am just now getting in the garage after I went and did like normal grocery shopping stuff and came home and a couch magnet got me because I haven't like taken a chill day in a while. I'm out of here though. We're getting it done. We got a lot to do in a short amount of time because I try to get these videos out by the uh, midday Sunday and it is already midday Sunday, so I need to hustle. So yesterday, so I'm gonna put the flange on, the bellow on, make this zigzag cut. I made this other zigzag cut. I cut that guy down. We got it clamped in place with the fancy clamps again we are using this uh 
Let's see my hand. This guy here as my envisioning tool of am I too low or too high? So this piece of tubing here will continue the exhaust, but for now I need to pull this whole thing back out and get these two welded together in this orientation and then fit this guy into place. Thinking about it again, which I don't, again, I don't do this enough to justify a whole bunch of those clamps, but it'd be really nice to have like four of that same size. But it is what it is. I just have to, I should be just tack welding this stuff together, but I know that that's not gonna get cut back off, so I don't see a problem in fully welding each piece as I go. So yeah, I need to pull that back out, get that welded up and continue. And hopefully we can get this thing above the rear end and a lot of other stuff by the end of the day. Yeah, I gotta stop rambling. I really wish that I had purchased these clamps before I did the header. That would have made my life so much easier. And I, I think this week or within the next two weeks. Actually, this week, because I got time off because of Carlisle. I will be making some kind of clamping jig of some sort. I have a couple old bench vices that I think I need to turn into just things to hold other things in place. Because normal steel, slap a magnet on it, you're good to go. This stuff is 304, it has zero magneticity, I guess that's a word. But yeah, here we go. Get that thing ready to go. Hopefully I didn't move it out of place while I was getting it set up, or getting it out of the truck. I'm gonna weld that back together real quick, or weld that two together real quick, and put it back in, get back on the ground, Put another piece on there, get on the ground. Yeah, just repeating, repeating the process. So if we take the straight edge, lay it across the bottom of the frame. Got about a half inch of clearance from the ground. Got tons of clearance from the ground in the back. I got about a half an inch between that tube and the cross member that I built in the rear. It's so making contact on this cross member, which I don't care about because I am fully prepared to just cut it out and plate it back in. That doesn't really matter. So I'll show you my idea of what we're trying to do here. So I'm thinking cutting it probably around here and welding the V-band probably here. That way when the clamp goes on there's tons of room. I don't want to I don't really don't want to put the clamp underneath the truck or anywhere near this bar and then end up having to fight it. If it's there and the truck is jacked up, I could easily just reach up in there, take the V-band off and be good. I'm going to take the muffler and probably put the portion that I cut off of the muffler, or off of this pipe back on the muffler and with the V-band on both sides. And my idea behind this is, if I ended up not liking that muffler, I could very easily, if, because I'm giving myself enough room before the tailpipe starts, so V-band, muffler, and another V-band before the tailpipe. That way this section could easily be replaced with whatever muffler that I decide that I want to put in there. Like I could buy a stainless Magnaflow or something if I end up not liking this. So I'm gonna get that cut, weld some V-bands on and go from there.
go. Macro absolutely sucks on this camera. So I will add in other pictures. Let's see. I really got a light at. No sugaring, which is awesome. It looks way better than the header. And the whole exhaust. Turning out pretty good. I'm gonna get this bolted back in so we can make this tailpipe and get this done. All right, this is bolted in. I got it propped up at the jack stand. Got plenty of room on that cross member. I got one of my 45 set in here. So I already let this all the way down to where it was gonna droop lower than the bags and shocks are going to allow. So now I need to figure out the depth of this guy and the angle that it's gonna sit at. Judging like this. And this guy will get welded onto the end of it to cross over the rear and go around the bag. So I think that, like I said earlier, I need to weld a V-band onto this, which this is two inch inside, this is two inch outside, or vice versa. So this doesn't really compute to that muffler. So I might have to weld a very short piece of tubing to the end of the muffler, then weld this guy on, then weld that guy on. So I'm gonna pull this back off, figure out this, and get this fully welded, and then go from there. So I got the V-band tack welded on this guy. I didn't want to fully weld it just in case it didn't work out. I have everything in a up pressure because, I, like I said, I'm going to have that other cross member notched out. So this can move up and down just a little bit. So I could probably potentially drop it half an inch or so. This, and look here, I have plenty of room. Let me see if I can get a better visual representation of this. Plenty of room here between the axle and the exhaust. So this will come off of it and dip around there. So now I need to mark here, cut it, put my little clamp on there, and tack weld this onto this pipe. Again, I am so glad I bought those clamps up over the rear. And then I gotta find my other bend, but I'm gonna try to make it go around the bag. But I'll pull this off, get this guy tack welded together first. Before I forget to mention it, James, I didn't actually need the tank. So James and Pops. That was a, a thank you for borrowing that, but this is how far I got with my tank. I was just below, or just above, maybe like 750 PSI, and we are right there at the end. So I pinched and squeezed every bit out of that bottle as I could. I think after seeing those cheap regulators on there, I'm kind of thinking my regulator's been leaking this whole time because... I consume gas way quicker than what I did on this entire thing. That was with purging 
all of the butt welded pipes and that was with yeah there, there's you're literally just dumping argon into a pipe at that point and it still didn't use that much so i'm pretty sure that regulator that i've had on there for the last eight years has been leaking and my homemade stuff turned out pretty good it worked well changed the color of it a little bit but it held up and i was a little off on the price in the beginning of the video i went back and looked the kit for like six or eight of these is like 200 something bucks or something like that but still building it off of amazon way cheaper like five of these was like 12 dollars, and these little brass things were really cheap if anybody's interested comment and i will add links to all of the random things that i bought minus the oxygen tube yeah let's get back to work so that guy is tack welded to that one i want to start the bend basically at the bag i want to curve around the bag because there's an air tank here there's shocks that are going to be pretty close to this i'll eventually build probably something out of aluminum like a heat shield that attaches to this to block the heat this is so far back in the exhaust that it ought to be not cool but not engine hot by the time it gets back here so a heat shield will fit in there fine so this guy basically drew a sharp line up in there that'll get cut this will get cut so hopefully it flows nicely i don't really care for the placement of the bend i would have liked it to hug the rear a little tighter but it's either it was too close to this tube or too close to the rear for the the 90 to work so it is what it is i think it still looks pretty good so far yeah get the cutting i really gotta hurry up it's already like seven o'clock with the pipe cut you can see what i was talking about here this is gonna get laid up in there marked with the sharpie and cut Plenty of room between all of the bars. We're not going to do it in this episode because I am drastically out of time to try to get this out this week. So this is going to be a two-part thing. So we're going to get the start of the tailpipe on there. It should be something about like this. I'm just going to angle it down and out i don't want to make the actual tailpipe yet because the truck's going to get body dropped and i don't know where the tailpipe's going to fall so normal circumstances the bed would be somewhere in this range but the bed is going to be body dropped and i i don't know actually where i'm going to place the tailpipe if you watch the last episode I'm not sure if I want it to come out at an angle or come out straight out the back. All of that will be decided after the bed is on the truck. So for now, it's just going to be basically facing out. So I'm going to cut this guy about here and get that tack welded on there. Well, I think that about does it for this week. I didn't make as much progress as I wanted to. I didn't get four days. I got a day and a half. And I ate up most of the one day just running around. So excuses. 
and I, I don't know. I was being lazy this morning, so this is what we got so far. Got this tack welded in. It looks kind of weird because it just dumps there, but I'll explain that in a second. We got plenty of clearance going around everything. I got three V bands on there. The tailpipe itself might even get V banded just to make it easier instead of having to remove that whole section if it ever needs to be modified for whatever reason. Maybe I'll put a V-band here. So basically, this is a cutoff from a 45. It's kind of hard to tell, so we'll just pretend this is a 45. This will kick over here and then it should run along the frame rail and then out of where the bumper cab corner is something around here but i'm pretty happy with it so far we got plenty of clearance around everything everything looks clean i did some practicing on welding and what i learned from this go around i pretty much got v-bands down v-bands look good welding really thin pipe to really thin pipe i'm still working on it I'm not quite there yet Next week, before I forget about it, we will be adding the tabs that I made in last week's video. I just ran out of time, so maybe somewhere around here to suspend it. I'm thinking one here to suspend it, and then one right around the flex. So, yeah. Pretty good progress. Not super exciting to watch. Sorry for that, but something that has to be done, and I got to learn something. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And if you're new here, again, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully you stick around. I will uh, catch y'all next week. Oh, before I forget, Carlisle is coming this Thursday. I will be putting out a video for Carlisle. It's just a really large swap meet with a bunch of old stuff, a bunch of new stuff, everything mixed together. So that's midweek, so expect that video, but I'm still going to put out a video of this this weekend. So yeah, check back in. We'll finish up the exhaust. We'll start it. I really wanted to start it this week, but it just ran out of time. But we will start it next weekend i promise so we can see what the header and all of this way overly expensive kind of crappy tubing that i bought sounds like yeah i'm done rambling see y'all next time